The thing that has worked really well for me wasn't me achieving things, but it was actually me submitting to something. Um, and I feel like I have a whole lot more permission um, as a leader to influence men when it's not my way. Yeah. Right. So I'm not trying to get people to do it the Weatherford way. I'm trying to get people to do it the God's way because yeah. that's how I'm trying to do it. So instead of me telling people like, I was I played 10 years in the NFL so I was team captain for four of the five teams that I played for and I say that to say I had some level of leadership and influence on the teams that I was in but I was a ronin and a ronin is um, I love Japanese culture a ronin is a masterless samurai and very very similar to you before you really went like all in on Jesus you would notice these different missions or these different sparkly things, be it an amount of money in the bank or living in a certain type of house or marrying a certain type of woman. We set our eyes on these different missions or these different goals. And I believe that a lot of the, the men that are listening to the conversation that we're having can really connect with having a dream or having a goal and a lot of the men that are listening to me right now have achieved some of those goals. Yeah. And they maybe have achieved enough of those goals to realize what I felt like it was going to do for my self-esteem or what it was going to do for my identity or what it was going to do in regards to like me being able to like relax. A ronin is a masterless samurai because it will continue to create new missions for itself and... And it wasn't until I had an encounter with God that I was willing to submit to something that was bigger than me. And in that encounter with God, I was able to get off of mission and on to purpose. And there's something that's so much bigger, Nick, about purpose than mission, because mission will give you momentary happiness, happiness but purpose brings joy. Um, and so I'll just pause there because I know that you probably have a lot of really good questions and I don't want to take this in a direction. Nah, that maybe, dude, I, I love it so far. And one of the things that about that is that you have walked out now, like you didn't get saved like last month, you're on fire. You've been, you've been maintaining the fire, mm. stoking it, which I just mm. love. Like mm. I love being around people like that because yeah, hearing you. your God stories and how God's moving in your life, how he's using you supernaturally, not just mentally to know mm -hmm. apologetics or something but to mm -hmm. see god move you had talked about a mutual friend of ours that encountered god in your home mm -hmm. that just fuels me up so much yet it's also easy and i don't know if you went through this at all to i'm getting attacked by the jungle yeah uh, hey I, when you're in jungle there's gonna be flies there's a couple in there of flies too. In you the can't jungle. see them on youtube <laughs> but there's one fly flying it's around kidding me. but it was planted to give it more of an authentic. yeah yeah we need to make it authentic so the inside of you become a Christian, you're on fire. It's very easy for people to go the extreme opposite and like lose desire for all the other things of the world in an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. Meaning, what if you were just totally obese right now and you don't take care of your health anymore? Mm -hmm. All the things, like how have you been able to have this purpose and this longer term vision for, I want to see souls saved, mm -hmm. you know, that god's above everything else mm -hmm. but man i've seen so often christians encounter god and go oh i don't care about this yeah. stuff anymore even though god had kind of placed it in their yeah. heart in the first place how have you been able to transition well through all of that and did you ever have a period where you were like i love jesus and all this other stuff i don't really care about anymore or was mm -hmm. it always kind of co-mingled together where you were able to bring no this to um I feel like there were... And fitness is a big one, by the way. Like, yeah. I think fitness is one that Christians that are fit, when they have an encounter with God, they just let it go. Mm. I very rarely see guys continue to, like, push themselves, and they see those as two separate things. Yeah. There were two, there were two defining moments for me, um, and I feel like every person that's, that's listening to this or, or watching this has had defining moments in their life that have created possibility or created limits in their life. And there were two defining moments for me in regards to my relationship with Jesus. There was a moment at 11 years old when I was at a power team concert and I had never seen... And please tell this whole story yeah. to me, please. Okay, I'll get into this story. So I guess the first real big defining moment of my life was at 11. And I grew up 
going to church, but never really feeling like I fit in when I went to school and never really fitting it, feeling like I fit in when I went to, to Sunday school. As a matter of fact, I always got kicked out of Sunday school. I mean, you got to be like one randy son of a gun to get kicked out of Sunday school. Nick. Yeah. And I got kicked out of Sunday school every single Sunday. And you and I can like laugh and giggle about it. And I also, I remember this so vividly, my earliest memories as a kid was getting kicked out of kindergarten for the first five days in a row. And it was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where they could send you to the principal and they don't need to call your parents. They can just paddle you. And so... I, very early on, I associated my hyperactivity because I was diagnosed with extreme ADHD. So I associated my hyperactivity and the fact that I couldn't sit still and it was harder for me to, to listen. I associated that with, with pain and with being bad yeah. at a really young age. And so we can kind of laugh about it now because as you look at me now, I'm 40 years old and I'm walking in the fullest level of freedom that Jesus has for me at this season of my life. And I know that he has more for me, but I say those things to say, most of the men that are hearing us right now are not walking in full freedom, right? Wow. They're still allowing, maybe they have a relationship with Jesus, right? Yeah. And, and, and the, the, the first defining moment, let me get back to that. So the, my first real opinion of myself is like I hated myself because I was different than my two brothers and my sister. I was different than all of the kids in kindergarten and I was different than all of the kids in Sunday school. So I got rejected and set apart yeah. from all of the other kids. And I know that there's a lot of people that roll with you that listen yeah, to this yeah. podcast that have always felt like they don't fit in. That's probably why you're an entrepreneur right now. It's probably why you like to some degree a lot of freedom in your schedule because you don't, you don't like the answer to other people 